name is Roxana Moran, uh, interventional cardiologist at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. Um, I'm here with a fantastic uh, panel and uh, about to have a conversation with two of my dear friends and colleagues, uh, Dr. Luca Testa, interventional cardiologist at uh, Policlinico San Donato in uh, Milano in Italy, and a uh, close friend and colleague, um, Dr. Alexandre Abazaid, who's from the Heart Institute in Core at Sao Paulo, Brazil. And welcome to this session on diabetes, the global epidemic, and what innovative approaches we have to address them. And welcome to both of you, Luca and Alex. Uh, so nice to have you. Um, Diabetes is truly a new global epidemic. We're seeing a tremendous growth across the globe, especially in industrialized and more pop, most populous nations of the world. And as diabetes increases, we're also seeing um, a lot of these patients who are living longer with all of the great medical therapies that are now available for diabetic patients. But as they live into their, um, into their uh, older ages, we're starting to see a lot more complex coronary disease that often is um, uh, coupled with a uh, calcific, uh, small vessel, multi-vessel disease. Uh, and often we are knowing and seeing that a lot of these patients are being referred to um, coronary angiography and revascularization using percutaneous coronary interventions. And the question here is, what are some of the issues that we're facing now? And Alex, um, I'm gonna to go to you because I think one of the things that you've been involved in are always on innovative solutions. And there is a stent uh, technology that's coming out that is to address this issue of a uh, huge proliferation of tissue in, in these patients with diabetes and maybe uh, an innovative solution. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, diabetic patients will have more diffuse disease, will have smaller vessels, and those are the kind of patients that will have more events, particularly more restenosis and more intima hyperplasia. So uh, the idea and the concept to have a stent like the Abiluminus, which combines the drug-eluting stent platform, the metallic platform, Crimped on a drug eluting balloon is extremely attractive to expose the surface of the drug to a, to a, a, a higher extent in the vessel wall to inhibit now intima formation. So I think Abiluminus really combines a drug eluting stent with a balloon eluting with a, some very special features. For instance, we know that you're gonna have a little bit more edge restenosis when you have diffuse disease, such in, in diabetic patients. And this particular platform offers um, a unique feature that you have more drug concentrated at the edges and closed cells at the edges and open cells in the middle. So there is a combination of factors that uh, convinced me that this device has a great potential to be used in diabetic patients. And it's a pretty thin strut uh, cobalt chromium um, <clears throat> stent, 73 microns, and uh, the drug is sirolimus. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that there is a, an agreement that uh, the Limus drug has a, a safer profile, as, as we all know, and uh, with the right concentration, I think it, uh, it inhibits now into, now into information. We proved that in the first team any study we did in Sao Paulo 22 years ago. So I think that uh, uh, Cirolimus is the right choice uh, together with a bioabsorbable polymer that has an additional safety feature. And again, the combination of the exposure of the struts into the vessel while delivering drug with balloon eluting can be a winner for diabetic patients. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by that innovative approach. Uh, now, let's see it to test, right? We want to know what data we have available. I know there's a big, large trial, which we'll come to, but Luca Testa, you um, have had a lot of experience with this device, and you've run some really impressive clinical studies. You want to tell us how do you choose this stent, and is it only in diabetic patients, or are you choosing it as a sort of your workhorse stent? Well, 
Well, this is a complicated question, I must say. But the thing is that I started my experience with this technology almost five years ago. And I must say that initially this device has been suggested, I mean, according to preliminary data, that it might be a solution for diabetic patients mm -hmm. only. But to be honest, uh, I'm not sure that it's actually limited to that. Indeed, at least in Europe, it has received the indication even for acute myocardial infarction, according to some preliminary data showing very good efficiency and safety. So, well, actually, initially, I must say I tried in every possible combination of patients and disease and so forth. And honestly, I didn't find any specific difference as compared to, let's say, workhorse devices. Nevertheless, come, well, with the progress of the technology, but also collecting data and data, we observed that at least in patients with diabetes, it behaves, well, similarly to patients without diabetes. So in other words, I said, look, this, is, this might be a solution. Well, while collecting larger data, and you'll sure, surely go to that, I mean, while collecting larger data, I said, look, this is probably something very good because you don't pay the price. I mean, Alex described the fact that it's actually merging the a combination. This is a combination of a drug coded balloon and an abluminal um, polymer drug eluting stent. But you don't pay the price because you may think that it might be cumbersome in terms of navigation pushability. This is not the case. This is not the case. So oh, I must say my experience, my personal experience is not science, but it's just my opinion and my judgment. Well, this is a very good device and potentially, potentially the solution for diabetic patients with coronary artery disease. Because of course, we must remember, we are not treating diabetes. We are treating the coronary, coronary stenosis associated with diabetes. No, I mean, um... Thank you, and, and, and thank you for being transparent that the science is what we really need and that what you have is a feeling based on the innovation that this could be a, a really great, um, great uh, device, but that also your own personal experience has shown it to be performing extremely well in your hands with your complex patients. And I think that's a very important and relieving factor because Whenever we get a new device, we're worried that it's never going to be, uh, its performance acutely may not be as good as everyone else. But um, Alex, um, I know that you are leading uh, the, uh, the, the largest ever diabetes study in PCI uh, that is ongoing, the Ability DM. Uh, can you just quickly tell us about that as we then sign off because our time is almost up? Yes. Thank you so much for your leadership in this trial, Roxana, as a chairwoman of the ability to try. And you are absolutely right. This is the largest study, as far as I know, with diabetic patients in coronary disease. 3,000 patients that are being randomized one-to-one, -one ability versus eyes, which is perhaps one of the most popular stents in the world. And, uh, and, and we are very bold not only to design a non-inferiority study, but also superiority for this novel device that can be a fantastic solution for diabetic. So thank you both for being here with me today. And thank you all for listening to this uh, session on the global epidemic of diabetes and an innovative solution with Abluminous DES, which is a, a, a very interesting monodirectional drug release with, uh, with a uh, new device uh, designed uh, for diabetic patients, but maybe even for a larger patient population. And we await the results of Ability DM, uh, which is the 3000 patient randomized study, already over 500 patients enrolled there. So uh, looking forward to those. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for being with me and having this Thank conversation you. with all of us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.